Hello there, this is Brian Collins from Become A Writer Today. And in this short video, I'm going to give you a practical guide to mind mapping that you can use to organize your complicated writing projects like a book or a novel or even something like a blog post. And the mind map that I'm about to show you is actually the mind map that I use to write a relatively detailed post about mind mapping, which you can visit on my site, Become A Writer Today. So in this guide to mind mapping, I think it's helpful to cover firstly, what are mind maps? And basically, mind maps are a, a way of organizing your ideas in a visual manner, or a way of organizing your ideas and providing a hierarchical structure to them. And you can use mind maps to free associate and to connect ideas in interesting and exciting ways. And I think it was Leonardo da Vinci who said, everything is connected to everything else. And mind mapping is a great way to highlight these connections in a way that that's sometimes difficult to achieve when you're putting one word after another on the blank page. So what should you use mind maps for? Well, I'd suggest that you use mind maps for a couple of different things. You can use them to organize your ideas before you actually try and write something. You can use them to organize your research so you can get out of all those books and then you can actually see so everything in one place. You can use mind maps to see the bigger picture of whatever it is you're writing before you actually try to write it. Uh, like Da Vinci says, you can use mind maps to connect unrelated ideas in a way that's just not possible through writing. Uh, they also serve as a memory aid, which is useful for every type of writer. And you can also use mind maps uh, if you're a visual thinker and you need a different way of coming at complicated topics. So what to use mind maps for? Well, you can use mind maps for lots of different writing projects. You can use mind maps if you have an idea for a book that you want to expand or work on. You can use a mind map to work or outline a blog post in advance or an article or even a speech. Or alternatively, you can use a mind map to organize an area of your life in a sort of to-do list. You can also use mind maps to organize your research and you can use mind maps to organize the ideas that you've read in books and so on. And if you want to see everything in one place. So my suggestion is that you use one mind map for a particular chapter in your book. You use one mind map for a theme you want to address. You use one mind map for a central idea you want to explore, like I'm doing here in this video. You use one mind map for a character, for a scene, and then you use one mind map for the overall structure of the, of the book. And the, way, the reason why I suggest this is if you use one mind map, it will help you drill down deeply into whatever it is you're trying to explore. So how to create a mind map? Well, they're actually relatively easy to create as I'm showing you in this video. And the tool I use in this video is called MindMeister, but you, you don't have to use that tool. You can just simply get a piece of pen and a paper and turn it to one side, draw the central idea, on the center of that piece of paper and from there draw branching or expand out from that central idea like you would a tree so it's a, it's important that you free associate these branching ideas and you don't stop to edit yourself as you do it you should consider your your mind map as a, a tree with subtopics coming out uh, and the lines for these subtopics should be thicker at the the root and thinner at the branch. And the reason why you do this is because you want your mind map to be visual and something that will be memorable when you look at. Another suggestion is that you brainstorm your topic when you're creating your mind map. And what I mean by this is that, that you just map or write all that comes to mind when you're creating the mind map. And you do it without editing yourself or stopping to worry if you're doing it right. And you do this for 10 or 15 minutes. And you know, don't be afraid if you make a mistake because you can simply start again. If it's pen and paper, the beauty of pen and paper is you can just crumple it up and start it again and not obsess about settings or tools. And if you're using something digital like MindMeister, which I'm showing you here in a video, it's relatively easy to rearrange or reorder the mind map as you go. And the other suggestion I'd say is when you're having a mind map is that you have a clear plan for moving from the mind map to something that you actually, you're actually going to write. Because you know while it's nice to have something that's pretty, it's not much fun or not much use if it's just gonna sit there on your computer. You need to be able to turn the finished mind map into something usable, something that you're going to create. And of course, like I'm showing you here, use colors and images. So the digital tools like MindMeister and MindMap Pro uh, have lots of different ways that you can use colors and images. But if you're using pen and paper, it's enough to have a black and a blue and a green pen and simply just sketched images and with each image representing a keyword on your mind map. 
So there are lots of different tools you can use for mind maps. The tool I'm using to create this is MindMeister and the free version is relatively uh, useful. Uh, but again, you know, pen and paper is an amazing tool because, you know, it doesn't run out of battery and you don't have to worry about the settings and you can just do it immediately. And uh, Scapel is another good tool. Mindjet, Xmind, MindNode are all good tools. And Tony Bazan has written extensively about MindMap in a series of books that you can find on Amazon. I also personally like using a whiteboard and I have a whiteboard next to where I write. And the reason why I like a whiteboard is because you can get a multicolored markers that are easy to erase and you can draw a large mind map. And then if you make a mistake or you need to redo something in the mind map, you only need to erase part of that mind map. In other words, it's quite an agile way to work. So here are some practical tips that will help you get more from mind mapping. My first tip is that you break down whatever you're mind mapping into topic and then subtopic and then sub subtopic because the goal of mind mapping is to dig deeper and dig deep in ways that you wouldn't normally do. And I would also suggest that you be agile. So it doesn't necessarily matter if the branches don't make sense or if the subtopics don't make sense because mind mapping is a way of exploring ideas too. When you have a finished mind map, I suggest that you, you prune it like you would a tree because there might be lots of different things on the mind map that are actually not quite useful uh, when it actually the time comes to write. So remove them and then tidy up and reorder the branches on your mind map. And when you have that mind map finished, then I would suggest that you print it. And when you've got the printed version, if you're using it as a visual uh, aid, you know, you carry it around with you uh, so you can review it as you go. Or alternatively, you can save it in Evernote, which is what I like to do because uh, I like to keep all my ideas in one place because it makes it easier to review them. But again, I would suggest just use whatever works and whatever helps you write that bit faster. Finally, I'd say to you that you have all you need right now to do mind maps or to create your first mind map. Even if all you have is, a, is an A4 piece of paper and a pen, that's enough to get started because it's a simple but powerful creative technique that anyone can use to organize your ideas and to explore different ways of thinking. Once you have that central idea, that acorn of an idea, when you plant that in the center of the page, your mind map will become an oak. And from there, you'll be able to write new and interesting things that you previously hadn't thought possible. So I hope you've enjoyed this short guide to mind mapping. And if you found the video particularly helpful, please subscribe to the channel or alternatively visit the blog post about mind mapping, which you'll find linked below this video. And don't forget to share this video with a friend. Thanks for watching.